next adversary is waiting for me. Hi guys, it's Skill Jim, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at some of the the Virtua Fighter items in my collection. So we're going to start the ball rolling with this uh, first for figures figure of Akira Yuki. It's uh, I'm pretty sure this is a, a Virtua Fighter Five. Um, model made to look like um, Akira from that game and it's a really cool figure it's part of the, the Sega All-Stars range on uh, first figures you can see yeah there's the Virtual 5 logo Virtual Fighter 5 logo sorry Sega and this is number 26 from 2015 so I thought I'd start with that just because that's uh, probably my uh, prized Virtual Fighter item out of uh, everything that I own um, but we're going to go back in time a little bit and we're going to go all the way back to Virtua Fighter 1 on the Sega Saturn. Now obviously this is a, a classic, um, I can't remember what age I was when I first played this but say if I got a Sega Saturn sort of near launch, I don't think we got it exactly on launch. But I do remember going into like a, a game shop. I, f I feel like it was like Telford, Telford game possibly, and um, they had like printed A4 sheets of it's kind of like a, a flyer, but it was in black and white with a list of all these different Saturn bundles that you could go for. I think possibly they just brought the price down at the Sega Saturn a little bit, and they were trying to bundle in some games and stuff like that. I remember this bundle that I had? It had a ton of games with it, maybe like seven seven different games and I, th I think, I actually believe, I think uh, Virtua Fighter 1 and 2 were included in, in the same bundle, um, which I suppose is unusual to have, you know, two from the same series as a, you know, a bundle with a console anyway, and um, can't really remember some of the other games, I feel like there was a golf game, like, uh, what's that golf game on the Saturn that begins with a, like, actual golf, something like that, and, um, I think I had Johnny Bazooka Tone, just because well, that, that sounds about right, that's that kind of era. I'm not sure about Knights, actually. I feel like Knights we might have got separately, but that was one of the games that I remember first playing on the Sega Saturn as Knights on a, a demo kiosk, and that's that sold me on the Saturn at the time. I really wanted to get Knights after playing it. Uh, what else came with that bundle? I feel like it was like a Sega Rally, possibly. Maybe the that football game, that SW Worldwide Soccer or something like that. There was a, I remember them being a, a few little sports games, like I say, with the the golf and um, football. But yeah, so that is my memory of picking up Virtual Fighter, the original. Um, this is my exact copy from back in the day. Kept it quite nice. If you can see the uh, back of the box is actually quite white, quite nice. Yeah, the cardboard's nice. What I tend to do uh, with PAL Sega Saturn games is got like a, a you know like a sharpie permanent ink thing, and if there is any like scuffing the cardboard on the spine, which you usually find you get quite often with uh, Sega Saturn games, the PAL games anyway, I normally just colour them in black as best as can, and uh, yeah, they look very clean on the shelf like that actually, and you can't really tell that I've I've uh, covered the. You know the sort of rough cardboard um, and and black ink there, and normally these are like falling apart really, <laughs> especially with their age. So let's have a quick check of the manual. Obviously, back in the day, you used to get thick manuals, and uh, this one's no, you know, no exception really. It's got um, so information on the characters there, so it likes. All of the combo moves that you can get, I think, for uh, well, for the Virtual Fighter One, there probably wasn't as many moves as uh, future games. So, as you can see, there doesn't seem to be a great deal of button inputs uh, on these pages. But yeah, it's in a few different languages, as you tend to get with European releases. As the disc, and you do tend to come with little pamphlets like this as well for other games at the time. So yeah, that's cool. So that's the very first Virtua Fighter on the Sega Saturn. And I've got the Japanese version as well, just for good measure. This um, 
And this came as a bundle with some other games, that's why the, the case isn't the, the greatest. Uh, it's a nice disc actually. The characters on the front of this there. Let's have a quick check, see if we've got a colour manual. So the Japan manual is actually nice in colour there. Look at that artwork actually, that's really nice. Um, stuff on the menus, the game. So yeah, I mean, what's your first experience with the original Virtua Fighter, guys? Interested to um, see if I've got any viewers that are actually of this era, or if you played it, perhaps you played it recently, maybe on the, the Astro City Mini, something like that. Might be your, your first time playing this game, or did you play it in the arcades? I can't even remember, actually, if I did play the original Virtua Fighter in the arcade. I remember seeing, I think, Virtua Fighter 3, um, at time when I used to go and say like the cinema or the, the ten pin bowling places, they used to have like virtual tennis machines I remember and obviously House of the Dead etc and I'm pretty sure the one that would have been in there at the time was Virtual Fighter 3 from uh, when I used to go bowling and stuff with my friends um, potentially played one of these in Sega World London when that was a thing that was probably around this sort of era, Sega Saturn era. Um, so yeah, it's cool to see a, a colour manual and some nice artwork in there. And then moving on, Game Virtual Fighter 2. And like I say, I'm pretty sure I got one and two bundled with the, my console when we got picked up the Sega Saturn back in the day. I want to say about 95, maybe 96. Um, it probably would have been more like 96 probably if console had been out a year or two and then obviously a bit of a price drop and bundling and a lot of the early releases that are probably like quite cheap to bundle at the time there they just want to get rid of uh, extra stock especially of you know common games like Virtual Fighter was you know pretty much everyone who had a Sega Saturn had Virtual Fighter one or two at least I would imagine same with Sega Rally I think everyone who owns a Sega Saturn back in those days anyway it would have come bundled with Sega Rally or Virtua Fighter, you know, there was no escaping that game from being bundled with the console. So again, here's the, the PAL version of Virtua Fighter 2. Really nice clean box, I can feel already there's a huge manual. In fact, the manual's bigger than the uh, the area in there to, to fit it in, which you, you do find a lot with the, the PAL manuals. They're actually too big for the box that they're in. And, in a sense, the weight and the heftiness of the manuals actually is what is uh, one of the major factors of wrecking these boxes. <laughs> Just because you can't, you can't thingy. In fact, these cardboard versions, when they first came, you can, you, I don't know, you can see right there, my lighting's very good, I don't know, but uh, they actually came sellotaped, shut, um, as standard, really, and you had to like, I remember just using my nail there, just poking it through there and uh, that was how you got in them and then once you got in them you broke the tape. you know they don't shut that well I mean this one shuts okay ish just because it's got that little um, extra piece of plastic and the little groove there for it to fit in but you know it's still not well this one is and uh, you, you'll, you'll find some that just won't shut at all Got another little pamphlet here, Sega Saturn. Cool seeing some of these really old um, pamphlets of advertising other games and software and everything. So yeah, Virtual Fighter 2. This is probably the out of the two. Well, I did play the original Virtual Fighter a lot, um, but I would probably think from my own memories and stuff that I, I probably played Virtual Fighter 2 even more just because um the graphics were like you know 10 times better weren't they you, you, virtual fighter one's quite all the characters are blocky the environments are quite blocky you know it's the first of its kind really it was the first 3d fighter i'm led to believe yu suzuki obviously there's shemu connections which we'll get into in a little bit but virtual fighter 2 actually had really nice environments and in fact it was yu suzuki on his chinese research trip which um, I've spoken about quite a lot before in the past and um, switch over at phantomriverstone.com 
obviously has all those blog posts on Yu Suzuki's research trip and it was he was actually researching a lot of areas and places in China to um, to use for Virtual Fighter 2 here so you know that's why you've got very accurate kind of Chinese environments obviously some of the places he visited on his research trip came back and uh, yeah he, he put some of them into the game so there's Virtual Fighter 2 for the Saturn which came, here we go, with, again, the Japanese version. So they went for like jewel cases, kind of like just standard CD jewel cases. Disc is a little bit different there, black and white. Quite cool, and you've got some uh, quick combos underneath the disc. I've always loved the, uh, the Virtual Fighter logo. That, that font's really cool. It's actually in English there. Second World Fighting Tournament has begun. With their polished skills and improved speed, the following 10 fighters will compete in an effort to determine the new world's number one fighting champion. So yeah, if you haven't guessed, guys, I, I don't think I, I prefixed it at the start of the video, but I'm uh, basically doing this video just because I'm really excited for Virtua Fighter 5 um, remaster, if you want to call it, or remake, that's coming out this coming Tuesday. So today is... Thursday, <laughs> get the dates right, yeah, this, today's Thursday the 27th of May and the game comes out the 1st of June. So not many more days to um, to wait now. Uh, in fact, it's kind of just come out of nowhere really. Um, but um, really cool to see. I'm glad that they, they're kind of bringing Virtual Fight back. I know it is it is 5 again, which we got in 2006 or something. Um, but uh, it's it's pretty much it looks like a full-on remake because you've got um, it now running on the Dragon Engine, so it'll be interesting to see how it actually plays um, on the Dragon Engine and uh, the updated character models and environments. It looks really cool, and uh, I should say it's a, a, a PS4 exclusive. So uh, look out for that. Yeah, I mean I'm pretty sure you would know about <laughs> about this game by now. It's also going to be free on PS Plus, at least the base game is. So if you've got a PS4, PS5, you've got subscribing to PS Plus, go grab Virtual Fighter 5 as soon as it's out next Tuesday. In fact, me and Matt from Shenmue Dojo, I don't know if you follow some of the, the, the goings on with myself on Shenmue Dojo, but we're actually going to be streaming it the Monday night because we're going to get a slight early access to the game. Uh, a day in advance and we'll be doing a, a a little bit of a stream at i think about half eight uk time on like i say monday the 31st so keep an eye out for that guys and um we might even have a, a copy of the game to give away and um the version that we'll be giving away is like a, it's like a bundle with um include some dlc and stuff so i'm really looking forward to getting stuck into this new release of virtual fire it's been taglined esports, and uh, there's going to be like tournaments and uh, uh, heavy emphasis on like online play with um, people across the world, and uh, yeah, so it should be interesting to see how it goes. See if um, you can generate a bit of virtual fighter buzz again, and perhaps you know encourage Sega to you know at least think about considering a virtual fighter six, which is what everyone expected and wanted. Um, but in fact, it's not too bad what we're getting. I, d I didn't even expect to get a complete remake with the Dragon Engine. And that was quite a, a surprise from the Yakuza team involved there. And seeing the AM2 logo again, again um, is really nice to see. So this is... Um, that was the Japanese version we've seen of Virtua Fighter 2. This is the American version. I, I don't know why I've got this. I think it came with something else. And I kind of just kept it just because all the you know, box is pretty shattered here, but the manual's really cool actually. How it's it's got that silver shine to the cover there, so I, I kind of kept it just because I really liked the way that the the manual looked and just being Virtua Fighter, um, it's just nice while in the collection anyway. So it seems don't know if it's in the exact same manual as the the PAL version. Um, but yeah, it's a, a cool one to own. And again, slightly different disc again. 
It's uh, it's weird actually how all these different releases they've all got the uh, their own disc art. <laughs> I don't know. Um, obviously, the covers the assume is like suited more to like Americans at the time, whereas the Japanese one tends to be a bit more perhaps animation looking or you know. I, I, I don't know who decides all this stuff, to be honest. So moving on, I'm going to just quickly, bef before we keep getting stuck into the, the mainline game series, is, uh, I'm going to take a quick look at this Virtua Fighter comic. So this is nice. This has got like a um, embossed kind of feel to it. So all of the writing, all the characters, even, you know, the muscles there. Uh, really nice. You don't really see that very often on the, the front covers of comics, and you know it's limited edition. It says here to to five uh, fifty thousand pieces rather, which uh, seems quite a lot actually, considering it's, it's limited. Got the Sega Saturn logo there, which is nice to see. I think I'm not sure where this was actually released. I was going to say I think um, this would be American, just because that white sort of Sega Saturn logo um, just reminds me a little bit more of the the American style I'm not sure I mean it's that they all use the same Sega Saturn logo Hello, the Japanese has got like a black line we had oh, I suppose it's similar to, to ours but I, I think this probably is a um, and it is in dollars so uh, just waffled on for about two minutes for no reason yeah it's a English it uh, American $2.95 and $4 Canadian. So this is cool. I mean, I don't know if this is based on the the anime series that we had. Um, I'm to actually watch that. Actually, I need to need to check out the anime series, or um, if this comic is based on a completely different story. I'm not sure if it continued to run on. This is issue one, obviously, but I'm not sure how many issues there actually was of the series. But it's just a, a nice, cool, collectible item. Cards on the back there, some cool artwork. Let's to the table. Pop this away quickly. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Ugh. There we go. Pop that in there. Right, so moving on now, Sega Saturn still. I'm going to take a look at Virtual Fighter Kids here. So, I'm not sure where this fits in the timeline. I think this came after Virtual Fighter 2. Um, I'm not sure if it came after something else or before something else. Um, I should, probably should have done a little bit of research, but if you, you weren't aware, I think it's pretty much the same game as Virtual Fighter 2, but just with fat chibi style heads on the characters um, kids there uh, nice instruction manual love the thick one it's always got the uh, combination buttons in there and again, in loads of different languages. So, not really, um, I've played Virtual Fat Kids. I didn't turn it back in the day. This is one I picked up a lot more recently, um, over the past five or six years, I'd say at least. And um, yeah, I've, I've played it a little bit, um, but I much prefer the, the, the mainline games, I suppose, the Virtual Fat One and Two. And then next up, we got Virtua Fighter Remix, which I believe is sort of like a Sega Saturn remaster of the original Virtua Fighter that was on the Sega Saturn. So it's like a remaster for the same console kind of thing. So I think basically all it was was updated models, but Virtua Fighter 1 gameplay, environments, um, etc. And this actually came with a bonus disc, which has got the, the CG computer-generated portrait artwork. Which, if you're not aware, we're going to get to it in a minute. Ooh. See, now this isn't a, a very good box because 
if you can see it's it's a little bit ripped there again this is one that i didn't have back in the day i picked up when i was going for my full satin collection uh, and finding this box at all to be fair is difficult and to get it in any kind of good <laughs> condition is uh, is quite rare to see if you, you have a quick browse on ebay see if you can find a, a virtual fighter remix box that's in good condition for a reasonable price and um, so i've got a bit of salty there i think that is the um the culprit sort of area there is you've got to pull back and lift that at the same sort of time there so it's very easy to rip that actually just where that catches fucking hell i've ripped it a little bit more just holding it <laughs> to show the camera so yeah virtual fighter remix and this side is the cg portrait collection um collection wise with that being the collection i wonder if that's got all 11 is it 11 Yes, because I think there's 10 fighters. So with Dural, that makes 11, which I'm going to show you in a second. So let's see. So obviously on the left side, we've got Virtual Fighter Remix. And there's a manual popped in the back here. Again, loads of different languages, combinations and stuff for the characters. And there's the CG Portrait Collection Disc. So it's a nice little collection actually, it uh, reminds me of the Mega CD jewel cases with the double uh, and then it's just put in a weird Sega Saturn sized, you see what I mean, it's like so it fits on your shelf quite uniform but the box is, uh, did like to use cardboard didn't they at the time there for these uh, game cases. So. So what I was talking about then was the, the CG collection, CG artwork portrait collection. And basically what this is, um, this that so that was the, the PAL UK release. Uh, that disc is with Virtual Fighter Remix. So that'd be a cool disc. I might put that in and then just see what is actually on there. See if you can, if there's like a menu and you pick and choose which character you want. Because in Japan, they actually released each character as an individual game. Um, when you know really we kind of didn't need to because all that's on a disc is um, maybe 20 to 30 uh, computer generated CG artwork basically some nice concept art um, well not not so much concept art but like just um, you know high-end graphics at the time artwork you know sometimes they, they'd merge uh, a real-life photo in with the character just to, to create the sort of nice realistic looking look and each of these discs along with those images also contained a song and um, there's actually uh, a vocal version and a karaoke version with the lyrics that pop up on the screen if you want to sing along actually i would really recommend i did a video actually um, that's got all of these images along with music so check that out. i'll link it i'll put, pop it up somewhere here or that'll be a card and if you wait till the end of the video in the end screen i'll pop thing is just easy click on it it's really cool the music's amazing in fact i still listen to this music in my car you know it's that good it's um if you like japanese pop it's kind of like that but there's some like nice rock songs in there as well and you know it is music that you'd expect to hear from you know sega sound like your daytona um you know let's go away that, that kind of music that it's really really good guys and if you listen to these songs a couple of times you'll be hooked um, like I am you know I, I know lyrics to a lot of these songs now and when they kick in there's one that I think it's Chain Reaction and uh, these they're just so good so check these out guys um, you don't have to buy <laughs> the collection here individually um, you can just watch my video and it's got all the music and all the, the all the images but these are pretty cool anyway or unless you get the, the Virtual Fighter remix there it's got the disc that apparently is the collection so uh, i forgot about that actually so yeah portrait series it starts with sarah bryant each of them come with a manual and these are the uh, just let you know again these are japanese releases so you will need uh, a japanese satin or a way of playing 
Japanese import games. I've just got a, an action replay card um, that pops in the back of my Saturn. I've actually got Japanese Saturn. So, yeah, I <laughs> I actually use the action replay card to play PAL games, actually, now. Um, Japanese ones all just work. So, so here you go, guys. This is, um, so this is Sarah Bryant's song, Dancing Shadow. Oh, oh, what a song. Dance, oh, I can't, I'm going to have to think of the music now. Oh, Dancing Shadow. It's kind of like that. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Really cool. They kind of made they they they're going for like this sort of album album look. Really cool. Just trying different things. I mean, I don't know if these discs are the most appealing to buy back in the day. I mean, they're, they're great now for like collectors, but. If you think, I don't know how much these actually were at the time, but for them to just have like 30 pieces of artwork and a song, you know, it's not worth the price of a game, is it? If they were full price, I, I can't imagine they were. Um, but yeah, CG and music. So that's Sarah's. Then volume two was Jackie Bryant, which we know was voiced by, well, I don't know, not in this one, but he's voiced by Eric Calso these days. And Sarah's voiced by Lizzle Wilkinson. Wilkinson, uh, these days. So it looks like you get the same sort of uh, leaflets, pamphlets and stuff with each of these. There might even be some Obi strips that you can find with them, but my set here doesn't have any. Believe in Love, Song 2. I hope you're finding this interesting, guys. <laughs> It's just, uh, I just thought it was interesting with along, you know, the announcement and, I mean, it's not just an announcement, it's coming out in a few days, Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate or whatever it's called. Uh, I can't wait. It's going to be a good stream, that is actually on Monday. Looking forward to it. A quick look. I'm going to look through each of these little booklets. So this is Akira's. Similar sort of thing. It's cool having the uh, the uh, the lyrics. I'm, I know that that one's in Japanese, but um, I suppose karaoke is obviously such a big thing in Japan as well that these probably are maybe a little bit more appealing to a Japanese audience who are invested in the series. And uh, you know, if they like the music, it's kind of like playing your own karaoke machine at the time. One song at a time, anyway. <laughs> uh, volume four, and get these booklets out. Is Pi, Pi Chan. Very cool. I like Pi's artwork, actually. You're my heat. Oh no! Oh my shining star. This is a good song. My shining star. I'll be playing the music actually in the background for these, um, depending on how long this video is. But like I say, you can go check out the the full on video I did a while back. Wolf Hawkfield is volume five. All got the same pamphlets. A bit copy and paste in it really chain reaction great song as well in fact there isn't there isn't a bad song out of all 10 of these mm. lao chan oh shining star that's the one mm -hmm. Oh my heart. Do, 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 do. It's just coming back to me. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, I said that was Lao Chow, didn't I? And uh, that was volume six, I think. So volume seven, yep, yeah, is Shun D. Drunken Master. 
Shundi. Can we get that out? Come on, mate. There we go. What song Shundi? Karaoke. Kinoju? Is that the name of the song? I don't know. Dancing Shadows. Oh, there was actually um, a soundtrack album that you could buy that's got all of these vocal songs on there. It's called Dancing Shadows. Um, so yeah, I mean, what I did, I basically just put all of these in my PC and ripped the music straight from them. Uh, I don't know if you know, but Sega Saturn games and I think Mega CD games as well, if you pop them in the computer, it probably automatically bring up Win uh, Windows Media Player. And uh, a lot of the music actually is, with it being CD based back in the day, they're just uh, a bunch of songs that you can just play. Um, so, you know, if you pop your Sonic R into a PC computer, I think there might even be some artwork or wallpapers as well. But uh, you can listen to all of the vocal tracks from Sonic R just by popping it into a PC. And obviously, then that means that it's just, you know, a simple click with Windows Media Player to rip them to your, your computer. So that's how you can get soundtracks, really, from your Sega Saturn games. It's pretty cool. Lion Raphael, is it? I don't really know the surnames. Kage Maru is volume 8. Volume 9, is it? Volume 9, sorry. Kage. He's uh, one of my favourite characters, actually. Can you get him out? I don't want to ban these things, but I don't want to waste time. Probably have uh, clicked off the video by now. Especially when songs are in Japanese and I'm not really showing you anything <laughs> or talking of anything important really but we're getting there so the number 10 is Jeffrey McWild volume 10 this one's actually broken let's put this one side a second Mm -hmm. Chain reaction. And the final one, because obviously there's a series of 10 there, but then there was a bonus one, which I don't really know how you get this. It says not for sale, so whether you have to send off for this. I think, actually, I remember someone saying that if you showed proof that you got all 10, then they would send you this in the post or something like that. Congratulations. I think that's probably what that says there. Um, so there's no booklet with this, it's quite a cool, it's like a digipack sort of thing. And this is the bonus one, this is Durell. It's got, obviously, images of Durell, and I think there's a, a completely different song on there as well. I feel like it's a bit more trancey, rather than a vocal song. Might be wrong on that. That's just something that just came to my head as I said that. So moving on, I'm just going to have a quick mention of Fighters Megamix. Obviously this was uh, a massive... A clash of different characters from different series, Fighting Vipers, Virtual Fighter series of course, and obviously Sonic Fighters is in this as well, amongst other characters, Daytona Cars, <laughs> this is a crazy game. This is probably the best fighting game, in my opinion, on the Sega Saturn, 3D Fighter at least. Um, so I just thought I'd just share this just because it's kind of a Virtual Fighter game. Um, I I do believe, is it based on the Virtual Fighter engine? Or is it the Fighting Vipers engine? Because I feel like you can, you, there's more emphasis of like smashing the characters through like walls and stuff, which was like Virtual, you no, know, Fighting Vipers, isn't it? Like that, where you're in a cage or something and you smash them through the railings. And... So, I was going to show a couple of magazines. So, this one, um, just Virtual Fighter style covers I've got. So, this is uh, a PAL UK. Official Sega Saturn magazine, and obviously this is Durell on the cover. And this was sort of in the in the era at the end of the Saturn's lifespan, as we're coming into the Dreamcast, which is why there's Dreamcast on the cover here. This is probably one of the last issues of the official Saturn magazine before it went into the official Dreamcast magazine. And uh, we just chose Durell there from Virtual Fighter Three, which we're going to get to in a second. To um, 
to embrace the cover, <laughs> basically. All right, so let's do the other two magazines. So we've got one with Pion and one with Akira. So Akira's first, actually, volume four. Uh, this is a pretty cool cover. It's Japanese Dreamcast magazine. It's 1998, volume four. Uh, 12th of December, so that'd be the 11th of December. Um, Oh, this was cool actually. Look at some of the, uh, I don't know if this is to buy or use points. Because they used to have that, that point thing, didn't they? I forgot what it was called. Dream points or something. So that could be for what these are. So these are Virtual Fighter something there. Is that a phone card? Now printing. Uh, I'm going to read this and butcher it really, but what have we got? It's Soniku, I don't know. So, yes, it's Sonicu Adventure Tele card, yeah. So, Sonic Adventure telephone card, so that'd be a virtual fighter telephone card. But there's some really cool stuff here. There's a calculator there. Don't know if it's actually branded. Dreamcast things. There's something virtual fighter there, something signed, a happy coat, jacket thing. It's pretty cool. Some more stuff. Look at that. Sega. Sakata, what's your name? Sega san san shiro. <laughs> Sega satan. Sakata san shiro. Um, right, so yeah, let's get to the, the virtual fighting stuff. So I think this, oh, these look a cool little bit on Project Berkeley actually. Shenmue. Obviously, the link between Virtual Fighter and Shenmue is that Shenmue was originally the Virtual Fighter RPG. It was going to become um, a Virtual Fighter RPG, but then Yu Suzuki changed the, the characters' names and obviously the, their appearances. But some some bits are like remain remaining of characters. Obviously, Ryo was based on Akira, and you know some of the other characters you could. Um, associate with other virtual fighter characters. And so yeah, that's pretty interesting. That's Shamu 2. Well, the that's the Hazuki Residence um, rotary phone. But you've got tapes and the cassette there from Shamu 2. And uh, you know, this is Project Berkeley, which actually came. Actually, we'll get to that. Actually, that's cool. It might not be in the box that I'll show you because I think I might have took it out. And put it in my Shamu collection, but we'll have a look in a second. But yeah, Project Berkeley came with the, um, the Japanese version of Virtual Fighter 3. So we got to the Virtual Fighter part of this magazine. I'll just quickly flick through it. Can you see the whole thing there? Yes, you can. So here we go. So it's basically, it looks to me like a bit of a guide. It's got the move lists for all the characters here. So obviously, this is for Virtual Fighter 3 TB which we're going to get to. And I'll tell you while we get flicking through this, so obviously this is all the characters here, but Virtual Fighter 3TB was a game I picked up with launch. I actually got my Sega Dreamcast on launch day. It was the most excited I've ever been for a console. Um, I've been playing the kiosks in Odeon Cinemas. Uh, well, the one Odeon Cinema I, just, I used to go. Dad used to play pool, actually. Um, where I live, there's a place called Festival Park, and it's got like, um, or it used to have Hot Shots, Snooker Place, Snooker and Pool, uh, Odeon. Next to Odeon was Quasar, I think, next. And then Ten Pin Bowling at the end. It used to be called something else actually before Ten Pin, but uh, Super Bowl was it, something like that. Um, but yeah, in. Let me finish with that one, so I'll get into this one. So this is the pie one. But in Odeon, we had Dreamcast kiosks, and I remember playing Ready to Rumble Boxing, Sonic Adventure. I just played the same levels that were part of that, that demo kiosk over and over and over. Um, you know, previously, that's cool. Previously, um, that's a of fighter as well. Uh, previously, my dad used to give me like a couple of quid, a few, five, maybe half a fiver, to play some of the arcade machines that they had in the Odeon and the Tempin. And one day I just stumbled in there. I already knew about the Dreamcast, I was excited for it. And then just seeing one in person hooked up this demo kiosk um, and 
just being able to play it for free without putting quids in, you know, because I was used to, to going in there and putting quids in the arcade and all of a sudden you've, you're playing all these games for free. And there's quite quite a few, quite a good selection on um, the demo kiosk, you know, Sonic Adventure, especially. I just, I, I played so much that whale scene of um, Emerald Coast. It, it just blew you away. Um, so yeah, I, it was the most excited I'd ever been for a console. And uh, Virtual Fighter 3, I picked up on launch. Didn't really play it as much as some of the other games I picked up at launch, especially Sonic Adventure. I just sunk pretty much all of my time into Sonic Adventure. And uh, that's why, after Shenmue, Sonic Adventure, the first one, is, you know, my favourite game of all time, after Shenmue. Uh, this is interesting, actually, a little piece on Shenmue here. And uh, if you've seen that blog post, this is uh, showing you that bat that didn't end up being used. Pretty cool. So yeah, I don't know if there's anything really in these magazines. Maybe like a continuation of Virtua Fighter Guide, is it? What moves to use, some of the secret combos perhaps. <laughs> Just to uh, help you out for each of the characters. That's very cool, but I did notice there's a nice set of the stickers here. You've got some Virtual Fighter stickers here, but um, if you can see that, this is how you're supposed to use them. So you, you wrap one around the, oops, sorry, just nudge the camera there. You wrap one around the lead of the, the actual Dreamcast connector port that you plug into your Dreamcast, and the other sticker goes where the, the Dreamcast logo is on the top of the controller there, so you can see these long ones wrap around the controller port there. So that's quite a cool idea. So yeah, that's the Pi um, Dreamcast magazine. That one was volume 5, 1998, so it's literally the one after the Akira. Which leads us to the Dreamcast. So this is Virtual Fighter 3TB, like I was just saying. I picked this up at launch with my Dreamcast console. Um, I was more excited to tell the truth about other games, but uh, I was a big Virtua Fighter fan, so this was on my, my list of uh, essential games to pick up anyway. And um, I didn't really get on well with it, actually, back in the day. I enjoyed it, but I thought it was really tough, actually. I was more, as a, as a child, more of a button basher rather than you know someone that would sit down and concentrate and learn combos and stuff. But since then, I've given it another try with the, the actual official Dreamcast arcade stick. And once you start learning how to block properly and, you know, uh, learn a lot of the moves, uh, the game's a lot more uh, fun. It's, you know, it's, it's not just like a jump in. I mean, none of the Virtua Fighter games are like a jump in and just smash buttons and, you know, enjoy yourself kind of thing. You've got to kind of take, take it a little bit more serious. Um, than, you know, your Dead or Alives or those sort of other fighter games. So that's Virtual Fighter 3 TV. Um, PAL version, here's the um, the Japanese version, which I would have picked up back in the day, literally for that Project Berkeley disc for my uh, Shemu collection. As you can see, it's not there because it's actually in my Dreamcast collection. So this is what I was on about, Dream Point. So I think you weren't in, in Japan, 10 points there for buying this game. And then you could spend it on those items that I showed you in the magazine there. So that they had a really cool system actually um, for picking up a lot of cool merchandise. Let's check the manual. See, it's a little bit thinner actually, and uh, it's in colour. Wonder why um, you know the Japanese versions of these games have have got colour manuals. And we kind of uh, we just got black and white ones, didn't we? Really. But yeah, it's pretty cool. And just quickly, I was going to show you, this is uh, Shemu 2, and this actually came with a preview discs. Well, there's a couple of discs here. For Virtual Fighter 4, which was, you know, coming to be released. I mean, it's unusual to have a Dreamcast game, and they're advertising a game, Virtual Fighter 4, that didn't actually end up being released on the Dreamcast. It actually ended up being released on the PS2, you know, Dreamcast's big rival competitor at the time. 
So we've got a Virtual Fighter 4 Passport. I don't really know what's on these discs, if I'm being honest. We've got a Virtual Fighter History Disc, which uh, might be worth taking a look at. But this came with the, the Shenmue 2 Limited Edition in Japan. You can pick these up. Still very, very easily, you know, they're not, not too expensive at all. And to pick up a limited edition version of this, uh, this I think this was sealed. And uh, I just opened this bit to get into it. Um, or whoever had it back in the day uh, kept it like this, nice and tidy by keeping the seal on there. So that moves us nicely into the PS2 era, if you can still hear me. Because I'm talking while not facing the camera. So we've got two games that came out on the, the PS2. I didn't actually own a PS2 back in the day. I just moved straight on to original Xbox. So these games kind of just passed me and uh, I only really picked them up in later years when I did get a PS2 for, I uh, wanted to collect the Sega 2500 collection uh, of titles. And uh, these are a few games I, I just wanted to get at the time that I missed out on. And this is one of them, while these two, these uh, Virtual Fighter 4s. So I don't really have too much experience with Virtual Fighter 4 compared to the, the first three games, which I uh, I played a lot of. 4 is probably my uh, least played in the series. But yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's Virtual Fighter 4. So I'm not sure what they change between releases, but this is Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution. Uh, which says the ultimate evolution of the Virtua Fighter series. So, I couldn't really tell you what's actually new, unless this is, a, again, another remake of the original game, I don't know. Just with, with that tagline I was thinking there, stand face to face with some of the greatest Virtua Fighter gamers from the birthplace of the series. The entire city stands before you in your quest to become the number one Virtua Fighter and emerge victorious. 15 selectable characters, all with new moves. Fight against real player AI data from VF.net. That's pretty cool. Improved graphics and reworked stages. And an all new quest mode and revised training mode. So it sounds pretty cool, actually. And the combinations there. Has anyone played these games, these PS2 games? Let me know. Um, be interested in your thoughts on Virtual Fighter 4. I think I have heard that this is. A uh, fan favourite, really, in the series. And also on the PS2, like I say, I was wanting the PS2 basically to pick up these Sega Ages 2500 series. This is volume 16. Really cool games to collect. These are these, uh, uh, there's a lot of like Sega remakes of classic titles like your Golden Axes and stuff, but then there's also some of the best um, re releases of some Sega's classic games like the. The Fantasy Zone collection is actually really, really good. Um, and there's, you know, Space Area. There's loads of games on here, but this is the one for Virtual Fighter 2. Um, so that obviously this, this is playable on the PS2 for the first time. And a uh, nice color manual. Well, it is a Japanese release, so that's probably why. Um, really, really nice. Um, Fateful Port, as uh, I'm led to believe. I've, I've played it, I can't, I just can't remember. I played it that long ago. Uh, probably improved graphics, of course. And obviously this came, if you got the first um, title in the Sega Ages, it came with this little nice Filofax ring binder, which is really cool, I like this style. And um, the first 20, I believe, came with these... Um, Information cards. We've got one for Virtual Fighter 2 that came with Virtual Fighter 2. So here it is. It's a nice one. Nice thick card. Just some information, some early artwork there, and obviously the guy, some guy that's involved, a little bit of um, a creator's note it says there from him. So that's really cool. It's a nice little folder. This is with some Sega classics. Great stuff. So 
So we're getting to the last few bits of what I actually own virtual fighter wise. Um, I would say time wise, timeline wise, this would be the next thing that I picked up. This is Virtual Fighter 5 for the Xbox 360. Like I say, I was kind of an Xbox game. I went from the OG Xbox to the Xbox 360 uh, before picking up a PS3 and then going back to a PS2. That's kind of how I got these PlayStation consoles. Um, obviously a big Sega fanboy. I didn't really want to get a PS2. And then um, just, I think the, the Last of Us came out the PS3 and people are hyping up so much I just I just thought you know what I'm gonna get a PS3 it was cheap it was like 99 quid or something with The Last of Us or 199 with The Last of Us so I picked that up and then I've kind of been a PlayStation gamer ever since uh, which is a little bit sacrilege from my prior Sega fanboy history but I mean this is you know where we're at now this is Virtual Fighter 5 obviously the re-releasing this on Tuesday, which is crazy considering this came out in 2006. Um, but obviously the, it's, it's more like a remake, the one that's coming out on Tuesday. And the Dragon engine, that's obviously the same engine that they use for the Yakuza games. Judgment. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what they've actually done to change. I know some of the DLC that they showed off on the announcement thing today on that Japanese YouTube video. Uh, some of the, the the DLC you can get classic, um, you know, polygon polygonal uh, models for the old characters like the Saturn Saturn style polygons. Uh, so that'll be pretty fun to play as those characters. But yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it does seem an age ago since we got this Virtual Fighter Five Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. To be fair, it doesn't feel like 2006. It doesn't feel like, what's that, 15 years ago? Jesus. So, it's crazy, to be honest. I mean, I mean, I know everyone's saying, like, where's Virtual Fighter 6? But, to be fair, 15 years is such a long wait. I mean, we, we did the same for Shenmue, really. And that, that seemed like a huge wait from Shenmue 2 to Shenmue 3's announcement. That was 15 years. And it's been 15 years since... Virtual Fight, that just shows you how, how fast time's going because it doesn't feel 15 years since this came out. And it's been the same times from this came out till, you know, this year, <laughs> 2021, that we waited for Shenmue 3's announcement, which is crazy. So, um, that's kind of like them, in a sense, if you think about it like that. 2015, when we got the announcement for Shenmue 3, that's like Sega saying we're remaking Shenmue 2. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The, and, and, and it's still feeling like why 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 it's the, it's the same game. You know what I mean? It, the way Virtual Fighter Five feels like we've had we've had this and we had Final Showdown not long ago. Actually, that was a digital only thing. I think actually this Ultimate Edition Virtual Fighter Five is going to be digital only. I can't see them doing a physical. I would buy a physical, but I can't see them doing it because obviously it's an esports title thing it's going to be mostly focused online that you can pick up on ps plus etc but it just seems crazy to me that this game is 15 years old and you know we're getting a remake of it you know using that sort of shemu 2 comparison there for you it would feel really weird if in 2015 instead of a shemu 3 announcement we got you know shemu, shemu 2 ultimate <laughs> edition it's just remade and whatever the engine would have been at the time 2015 so just a last couple of little miscellaneous items i've got a couple of these uh, metal tin style cam whatever they're called badges these metal badges uh, from tgs 2015 16 and a year or two later 2017 perhaps with that badge um so cool and i've got an edge magazine cover kind of postcard for Edge's 200th issue, was it? They released a big set of these postcards and this is the, the Virtual Fighter one. Uh, obviously that is Virtual Fighter 5, I think. And then the most recent thing I've got that's kind of Virtual Fighter related is this Mega Drive Mini cartridge of Virtual Fighter 2. And that's actually one of the few Virtual Fighter games I don't own, the Mega Drive version, but obviously I've got it on the Astro City 
not on the Astro City Mini, sorry, the Mega Drive Mini. Um, I played it. It was on compilation packs back in the day or emulation. I've, I, I've, I've played the Virtua Fighter 2 on the Mega Drive and obviously the Saturn version is much more superior. But uh, it's a fun game nevertheless and I think it was a, a Game Gear Virtua Fighter game as well. It's probably probably one or two games maybe I, I don't have as well. Um, from, I don't know if it was a Game Boy Advance, you know, just a, a, a random release like that I'm not 100% on. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that is everything then, guys. So, I mean, thanks for sticking around. I mean, I don't know if that was entertaining or not. I say this probably every video. Like, <laughs> waffling on through, especially the portrait series. If you stuck around through all 10 of them when I was, like, going through the same manual... <laughs> For, uh, 10, 10 or 11 times or whatever and again I'll just show you the prize possession this Akira Yuki first figures figure I kind of hope that they do some more Sega um, figures in fact I hope they don't money wise um, and room wise I haven't really got much room for these sort of things these days I did go a bit crazy back in the day I've got loads of Sonic ones that they released, I got the Knights, the Shenmue ones twice, because I'm stupid. Um, Beat, Jet Set Radio, the Sakira one, yeah, mostly Sonic ones, Big Eggman, Shadow, Silver, <laughs> got the 25th Sonic, yeah, so probably would rather them not. Uh, I know they did a Reeler, Reeler, whatever it is, from Knights, the um, sort of the evil nights i didn't pick that one up um i think I've, I've i've got to that kind of thing where i've started drawing the line under picking up a lot of these um things that i would have probably just picked up on a whim but now I'm, I'm a little bit more careful with my money especially having a daughter um so i'm not just buying stupid things not that these are stupid these are absolutely amazing you know i, I love all these these big figures um but obviously i've got to make a few compromises these days so yeah guys, I just want to thank you all for, for watching that, I mean, um, yeah, was that enjoyable? Let me know, um, let me know which of these games you played, which is your favourite Virtual Fighter in the series, if you're excited for 5, um, coming out on Tuesday, well, the, the remake of 5, the ultimate one, it's going to be really interesting to see how that turns out, hopefully it gets a good reception, hopefully a lot of people play it online, and get into battles you know just like that hopefully with with it being released on ps plus that won't be an issue and hopefully that will then lead on to hopefully getting a virtual fighter 6 in the future so like i say guys i mostly do a lot of stuff now for shemu dojo being the the co-owner there we do podcasts um myself and matt and like i say live streams we've been doing a few recently um, and we're going to be streaming Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Edition Bundle <laughs> Pack, whatever you want to call it, um, the day before it's actually released. So that'll be the 31st of May. If you're watching this before then, um, come drop, drop by. It'll be about half past eight uh, UK time, which is BST at the moment. Um, so yeah, come join us, say hi. And we're going to be talking a little bit about Virtual Fighter's history. And um, being Shamu Dojo, we're going to link that into the Shamu series a little bit as well. So again, thanks very much for watching, guys. And until next time, you know, take care. See you later.
You and I aren't finished yet. I want a rematch!